In this video, we're going to explore the fascinating world of vintage perfumes from the 1950s. These scents were beloved by Hollywood stars and continue to enchant us today. Hello lovelies, my name is Laura, welcome to my channel. Today we're diving into the wondrous world of vintage perfumes from the 1950s. These fragrances were beloved by Hollywood stars and still hold a special allure for us today. In the 1950s, Hollywood was in its heyday. The biggest stars in the world graced the silver screen and their glamour radiated out into the world. It was a time of excess and luxury and no one epitomized that more than the women of Hollywood. They wore the most beautiful dresses, had perfect hair, and smelled divine thanks to their choice of perfume. Perfumes were a big part of 1950s culture, and each fragrance had its own unique story. Some were created to celebrate major events like marriages or movie premieres, while others were simply meant to make women feel more confident and attractive. No matter what the reason though, these vintage perfumes remain as popular today as they were 60 years ago. In this video, we'll take a look at some of the most iconic fragrances from the 1950s and explore why they continue to be so loved by people all over the world. 1950 was a year of contrast. The world had just come out of the devastation of World War II, and yet there was a feeling of hope and optimism in the air. This was the decade that saw the birth of rock and roll, the beginning of the civil rights movement, and the rise of television as a mass medium. It was also a time of great change for the perfume industry. In 1950, Christian Dior launched his first fragrance, Miss Dior. This was a revolutionary new scent that paved the way for the new generations of perfumes. The 1950s were a time of great change and Miss Dior was a forefront of this change. Women would frequently select one perfume in the early to mid 20th century and wear it exclusively for the rest of their lives, making it their trademark or signature fragrance. Even now, people still enjoy the characteristic scents of each designer that were chosen by some of the most fashionable women of the day. When you think of Chanel No. 5, Marilyn Monroe quickly springs to mind. Other less well-known pairings like Catherine Hepburn's Love of Guerlain's Val de Nuit are between the trendy face and the classic perfumes. The 1950s were a fascinating decade because new art trends were arising and the effects of World War II were still being felt globally. With a preference for mood and color above conventional mediums and shapes, Abstract expressionism and a pop art demonstrated how society's perceptions had changed over the previous 10 years. Nina Ricci's Le Air du Temps, despite being introduced in 1948, Nina Ricci's Le Air du Temps was one of the decade's key scents of the 1950s. Compared to scents like Chanel No. 5 or Shalimar, La Air du Temps by Nina Ricci is without a doubt one of the most iconic scents of all time. It is the ideal balance of an enchanted elixir, the representation of femininity, and the promise of eternal youth. La Air du Temps continues to represent the fundamental principles of love, peace, and freedom after almost 69 years. Women who had worked in wartime factories were especially in need of hope and excitement and soothing promises after World War II. They yearned for their old femininity and wanted romance to return to their lives. At that time, fragrances had strong, formal aromas that reflected the mood of war and were overly thick, dense, and heavy. Because all oppression and fear were ended, much like the war, there was a need for joy, <laughs> pleasure, and optimism. People were free to move around and smile. 
The feelings were shared by Robert Ricci, Nina Ricci's son. He therefore made the decision to create a new fragrance to symbolize the new era. Seizing the chance to grow his business, Francis Fabron and Nina Ricci's son helped create La Air du Temps. He says, I started by sensing the aroma in my thoughts before I begin to produce it. He said, I can clearly see the scent I wish to get a whiff of on the shoulders of a woman I adore. La Air du Temps was written for a very feminine woman, perhaps someone I had recently seen or met, but definitely someone I had imagined and idealized. I view a fragrance as an expression of love, whether it be real or imagined. I am a romantic and I cannot imagine life without dreams," said Ricci in reference to the idea of La Air du Temps. The introduction of synthetic ingredients into perfumery was no longer regarded as a revolution when La Air du Temps was developed. Nevertheless, there was plenty of room for creativity. As a result, Francis Fabron generously added benzyl salicylate to the mixture. When used in large quantities, this synthetic molecule improves the lavish aroma of flowers, including jasmine, rose, gardenia, and spicy pinks, while also adding purity and fluidity to the final mixture. And I love this perfume. It's so fresh and feminine. The impression becomes particularly carnation-like with its clove hue when combined with smoky eugenol and iso eugenol. This is the essence of La Air du Temps. Carnations, which took the place of bullets on the day of the revolution in Portugal, a nation where dictatorship also existed, are a significant emblem of freedom in that nation. A photo of a young child putting a carnation in a soldier's gun became iconic. Carnations symbolize the triumph of democracy, optimism, peace, the end of conflict, and sorrow. As a result, its scent might also be an old factory metaphor for optimism. The stopper of the perfume, the original one, the 1948 Falcon created by Marc Lacou and designed by Jean Reboul, featured a rising sun and a lone dove. However, Lacuille invented the interwinding dove's stopper in 1951 to symbolize the post-World War II calm. The new design spiral glass symbolizes the sun and the doves perched atop it stand in for purity, peace, and love. There have also been a limited edition falcons modeled after the doves bottles over the years. La Air du Temps Falcon won the title Perfume Bottle of the Century in 1999 and it is a really stunning bottle, very unique. Next is Miss Dior. Christian Dior said women who were a part of my youth are best remembered for the perfume since it lasts far longer than the moment. After World War II, many designers felt the need to alter the direction of society. Robert Ricci, for example, used his sculpture La Air du Temps to symbolize the desire for a new age. Not much different was Christian Dior. He told perfumers to just produce fragrance that is like love by 1947. Dior used the debut of his first collection as an opportunity to debut the new scent, but up to that point, it lacked a name. At that moment, the designer's sister, Catherine Dior, entered the Dior Couture store. And as she descended the stairs, Mitza Bricard, the designer's muse, said, here's Miss Dior. Christian Dior abruptly said, Miss Dior, that is my cologne. The essential essence of his gowns and his imagination was Miss Dior. The now Miss Dior physically flooded the area with the premiere presentation was to take place. As customers and journalists left, leaving its aroma on their skin and clothing, the perfume began to be synonymous with Parisian high fashion. In the first Dior store, which opened in February 1947, more than one liter of pure fragrance was sprinkled each week. Finding ingredients for the fragrance was difficult in the years following World War II. Dior rapidly released that luxury was the key to success even if it meant monetarily ignoring its French customers owing to their lack of money. 
there was no coal to burn, and thousands of workers were on strike. On December 1st, 1947, nine months after the New Look upheaval, the first Misty Your bottle was sold. The original bottle was created to reflect the ideal female silhouette that Christian Dior envisioned for the chic and contemporary woman. A perfume bottle is a feminine, curvy, and ageless object. Similar to Miss Dior, the ringed bottle is a representation of anything that holds a priceless liquid. The bottle speaks of timeless beauty and youth because of its shape, which resembles a cross between a flower and a hourglass. The era of wartime and post thriftiness in clothing and cosmetics came to an end with Dior's new look. The designer introduced his vertical line in 1950 along with a new Miss Dior bottle. The new style had straighter, more geometrical lines that were more architectural. A bow tie and the houndstooth pattern etched in the square glass helped to soften the considerably more sober and austere appearance. This item, which was cut like a suit typified the refined tailoring and hot couture attitude of Paris. The present Miss Dior bottle upholds these Dior elegance ideals. Like any flacon, this bottle contains a number of important components. Since Miss Dior's perfume conception, houndstooth bow ties, ribbons, and English typography have been used as its original clothing. A small-scale pairing of black and white in the houndstooth pattern creates the appearance of a gray fabric. It is uneven and checkered. In contrast, the color combination of pink and gray, which has become synonymous with the House of Dior, unites a feminine and masculine hue. As a result, the houndstooth is a style of, of entirely masculine fabric that works well on feminine models. In addition to using the word Miss rather than Mademoiselle, this classic fragrance's name also has English-influenced typeface. Miss Dior received Edwardian handwriting, and as a result, Dior's trademark typeface was created. Another distinguishing feature of Miss Dior's style is the ribbon. The ribbon represents a gift because it is used to wrap something special that will be handed to a special someone. The Christian Dior bow tie initially appears in a 1947 Miss Dior advertisement with Rene Graru's signature. Another type of bow tie, the Leonard Fontangens, which was inspired by the adornments at the Palace of Versailles in the 18th century, is shown on the cardboard packaging. The Duchess Marie Anglaque Fontages, mistress of Louis XIV, popularized a hairdo that bears her name. She is the inspiration for the name of Fontages' bow tie. Numerous Dior items adopted the distinctive oval shaped bow tie displaying the name Miss Dior as their logo. And next is Estee Lauder Youth Do. The youth's enthusiasm, which became the major influences on fashion, beauty, and music in the 1950s, is brilliantly captured by Estee Lauder Youth Do. If you need an example, just consider how the Teddy Boys rose to prominence and James Dean unfailing coolness. The combination of delicate floral notes and rich spices in Youth Do has earned it the title of one of the all-time sexiest perfumes, which is very appropriate for a decade that gave us Hollywood icons like Marilyn Monroe and Grace Kelly. This scent's appeal lies in its dual nature. No longer were female fragrances only characterized by flowery aromas. The base notes combine earthy moss and potent spices with the floral top notes of rose and lavender. At the time, this perfume represented teenage culture, and like most things from the 1950s, it is ageless and suitable for a modern day wear. Next, we have Femme de Rochas. A deep, seductive scent named Femme de Rochas was developed in 1944 with the Femme Fatale in mind. The bottle was designed to resemble Mae West's hourglass figure. It has since been reformulated by Olivier Cresp with a prominent cumin note. 
This is definitely a sexy woman's perfume, and it was very popular in the 1950s. Another popular 1950s perfume is Max Factor's Hypnotique. Max Factor's Hypnotique and Primitive are accessible mass market perfumes that are less expensive than those made by major fashion houses. Hypnotique by Max Factor is a floral fragrance for women. Hypnotique was launched in 1958. The nose behind the fragrance is Laszlo Langale. Top notes are adelides, spicy notes, and citruses. Middle note is floral notes. Base notes are oak moss and animal notes. And another very popular perfume in the 1950s is Aperge by Lanvin. Arperge by Lanvin is a floral romantic aroma that was developed in 1927 but only became very popular in the 1950s. Evening in Paris by Bourgeois was another super popular perfume in the 50s amongst teenagers. For French perfumer Bourgeois, Ernst Buch created the scent Evening in Paris in 1928. Bourgeois was founded in Paris in 1863 to produce face powders and cosmetics and it has been producing perfume since 1900. The cobalt blue bottle that Evening in Paris was initially packaged in was created by Jean Helieu. The fragrance was abandoned in the late 1960s but Chanel brought it back and reworked it in the early 1990s. And did you know that in the 1950s 36 new perfumes were introduced. 1950s perfumes were the height of fashion. Every woman wanted to smell like a movie star, and every man wanted to be able to identify his lady by her scent. The most popular 1950s perfumes were heavy and floral with notes of jasmine, rose, and gardenia. These scents lingered on the skin, lasting all day and into the night. They were intoxicating and women loved them. Men would often buy their lady a bottle of perfume as a gift and it was not uncommon for a woman to have several different scents in her collection. 1950s perfumes were glamorous and alluring and they remain some of the most iconic fragrances of all time. In the 1950s, old Hollywood was in its heyday. Stars like Marilyn Monroe, Grace Kelly, and Elizabeth Taylor captivated audiences with their natural beauty and irresistible charm. And while these movie stars may have looked effortless on screen, the truth is that they put a lot of time and effort into their appearance. This included choosing the perfect perfume. In an era when good grooming was essential, many actresses took great care in selecting a signature scent. Some of the most popular 1950s perfumes worn by Hollywood starlets include Chanel No. 5, Guerlain's Val de Nuit, and Le Air Dite by Givenchy. These classic fragrances are still beloved today, evoking a sense of glamour and romance that is timeless. Lauren Bacall was one of the most glamorous and iconic actresses of Hollywood's golden era. Born Betty Joan in 1924, Bacall got her start modeling in New York City before being discovered by director Howard Hawks, who changed her name to Lauren Bacall and cast her in the 1944 film To Have and Have Not. The film was a huge success and Bacall's sultry on-screen chemistry with co-star Humphrey Bogart made her an overnight sensation. She went on to star opposite Bogart in several more films, including The Big Sleep and Key Largo, cementing her status as a Hollywood legend. In addition to her successful film career, Bacall also had a successful stage career, winning a Tony Award for her performance in applause. Lauren Bacall was truly one of a kind and her legacy as a Hollywood icon will live on forever. The seductive star of romantic comedies like How to Marry a Millionaire and classic film noirs like The Big Sleep is said to have enjoyed diptych fragrances, with the La Ombre Dans La Eule being her favorite perfume, the perfume which draws its inspiration from 
summertime nature combines rose and blackcurrant notes with the rich scent of blackcurrant berries. Diptych was established in 1961 by Christian Gertrot, Desmond Knox Leet, and Yves Kusland. The pals created textiles and began creating perfumes to go with them. The brand new diptych container and stained glass were illustrated by Pierre Marie in the Art Nouveau style. And I love diptych perfumes, they smell so good. La Ombre Dans la Ile, a groundbreaking scent created in 1983 by renowned perfumer, was one of the genre's first fruity floral scents. After harvesting black currants and roses, Dido Murren, a close friend of the Diptych founding trio, was charmed by this concoction of aromas. And next we have Grace Kelly, a stunning American actress who later became a princess, married the love of her life in front of guests that included both movie royalty and national royals. Her marriage to Rainier III, Prince of Monaco, seemed to be straight out of a Hollywood fairy tale. The prince ordered a bespoke fragrance for Kelly to wear on their wedding day from the prestigious fragrance firm Creed to commemorate the union. The now available fragrance, which was created to match her bridal bouquet, combines floral notes of rose, violet, and iris with zesty undertones of bergamot and tuberose. And this perfume is super fresh and floral. I really love it. One of the most intriguing perfume companies on the market is without a doubt the House of Creed. It was established in London in the year 1760, so it's a really old company, and it has been run by the same family for six generations. It may be said the Creed, which was once only available to members of the British royal family, is now distributed all over the world and rivals even Chanel, Dior, and Givenchy in terms of being exclusive and renowned. The persistent preference for natural substances over synthetic ones is one of the Creed's appealing qualities. They have been in business for 225 years, which is an accomplishment in and of itself. None of their 72 scents contain a single synthetic or manufactured ingredient, Creed fragrances have a deep history and a rich composition. Florissimo, one of their most well-known fragrances for ladies, was famously ordered for Grace Kelly's wedding day in 1956, after which she reportedly said she was very smitten with the smell and that it would eventually become her signature scent. Not terribly surprising considering that the scent was made in her honor by her husband, Prince Rainier of Monaco. This floral fragrance, which is as fragrant as its name implies and contains bergamot, tuberose, Bulgarian rose, violet, florentine, iris, is a favorite of Madonna and Queen Elizabeth II as well. And next we have Catherine Hepburn. Actress Catherine Hepburn was known for portraying strong, independent independent women, and she had strong preferences for scents. One of Catherine Hepburn's favorite perfumes was Guerlain's Val de Nuit, which was created in 1933 as a tribute to a pilot and author Antoine de saint exupéry The bottle design was inspired by Art Deco and featured an aeroplane propeller. Hepburn was said to be an aviation enthusiast since she portrayed a pilot in her second movie, Christopher Strong. A smoky, deep, and oriental perfume with orange, jasmine, and narcissus notes. And this one smells really good too. I really like it. And next we have Audrey Hepburn. Hepburn and Hubert de Givenchy had a storied partnership and Hepburn frequently wore the French fashion house's creations in her movies, including Breakfast at Tiffany's and Sabrina. In 1957, Givenchy made La Air de Tite, which translates to forbidden in French, especially for her. There are rumors that Audrey Hepburn didn't want him to make the scent available to the general public. 
Fortunately, the house chose to release it in the 1960s, and Hepburn became the first actress to serve as the face of a perfume campaign. The seductive perfume is a white floral scent with notes of jasmine, narcissus, and sandalwood that is also timelessly elegant. And next we have Marilyn Monroe. When Monroe admitted in an interview in 1952 that she wore five drops of Chanel number no. five and nothing else to bed, her love of Chanel's iconic fragrance was infamously verified. The quotation is so well known that Chanel included the original interview video in a 2012 marketing campaign, with one glass bottle of the golden fragrance being sold globally every 30 seconds. The perfume is still among the most well-known fragrances in the world. And next we have Elizabeth Taylor. The Cleopatra actress's jewelry, notably the diamond Richard, Richard Burton gave her, is instantly associated with flair. But the actress was also a forerunner in the field of celebrity fragrances, introducing her own line of fragrances that featured white diamonds, which is now the most popular celebrity fragrance of all time. Elizabeth Taylor chose the luxurious smell of Jean Depres Ball of Versailles before she started her empire. The fragrance, which employs over 300 of the most expensive and natural ingredients in the world to create a spicy perfume of bergamot, cedarwood, and three rose kinds, was inspired by the balls hosted in the Hall of Mirrors at Versailles. And this one is so unique too, and I love the bottle. And next we have Rita Hayworth. Shalimar, the first oriental scent ever produced by a high-end brand, was supposedly the 1940s movie star go-to cologne. In 1925, the potent blend of bergamot, iris, and vanilla notes was designed to depict the imagined romance between an Indian princess and an emperor. The bottle design, which Raymond Guerlaine devised and was inspired by the basins of the renowned Shalimar Gardens, it is so outstanding that it was awarded first place at the Paris Decorative Arts Exhibition the same year it was produced. And this one is so good. It takes you back in time to the 1920s. I just love that perfume. Next, we have Ingrid Bergman. The similarly fashionable Isabel Rosalini claims that the Casablanca actress wore La Air du Temps exclusively. The fragrance, which was first introduced in 1948, combined seductive notes of jasmine, orris, and sandalwood with fresh notes of carnation and gardenia to capture and celebrate post-war optimism. The delight of Nina Ricci's original scent is still suitable today, presented in a chic twisted glass bottle with a silver dove stop. And next we have Dorothy Dandridge. Dorothy Dandridge, the first woman of color to be nominated for Academy Award for Best Actress, wore Taboo by Dana. A seductive smell made by perfumer John Carls under the risque direction to produce a scent that a prostitute would wear. Taboo, the forbidden fragrance, was its tagline. Bergamot, clover, oriental rose, amber moss, musk, patchouli, sandalwood, and vetiver are among the notes. And you can still buy Taboo today, but I heard the new one just doesn't smell anything like the original from the 30s. According to rumors, Dana gave perfumer Jean Charles, co-creator of Ma Griff, Shocking, and Miss Dior the following instructions. Make a perfume a whore would wear, which is like kind of a weird thing. Thing to do if you think about it. And the perfumer also created Ma Griff, which was known also as a prostitute's perfume. So it's interesting that they wanted to make it like that. Maybe they just wanted something very risque for the time period, but it is a popular fragrance now. Given that the majority of his perfumes were produced in the lady like 1930s and 40s, it is possible that Carl's was simply okay with the overt sexuality and scent as opposed to just a suggestion of it. 
In any case, he was undoubtedly subversive, and he made some of the greatest perfumes. Now, about that perfume, Taboo is a true oriental, rich, sweet, ambery, and spicy. Instead of vanilla, the sweetness comes from the powerful flowers of clove, benzoin, and amber. Though there are no obvious fruit notes, Taboo has a stewed, almost spiced fruit harmony. It's a scent you can cuddle up to on a chilly day. 1950s Hollywood was the golden age of celebrity culture, and perfume was one of the ways that stars tried to capture that magic. With names like Glamour and Stardust, these perfumes were designed to make women feel like they were living in a fairy tale. And while some of these 1950s Hollywood perfumes have fallen out of favor, they still hold a special place in the hearts of many vintage perfume lovers. So whether you're looking for a touch of nostalgia or just want to try something truly unique, be sure to check out some of these classic 1950s Hollywood perfumes. As the 1950s came to a close, Hollywood perfumes were more popular than ever. The scents that made stars famous were now being worn by women all over the world. From Marilyn Monroe's Chanel No. 5 to Elizabeth Taylor's White Diamonds, these fragrances were now household names. And just like the movies that made Hollywood famous, these perfumes were here to stay. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to check out some of my other vintage perfume videos. Alright, see you guys again soon. Bye!